The OCCA Advanced Financial Management paper is 195 minutes, which means 3 hours 15 minutes in total. So what I would do is to divide 195 minutes into 80 technical marks. So therefore, for each mark, we'll allocate 2.4 minutes there. And of course, I will always advise my students to plan the deadline for each requirement before they actually do the exam questions. Now, where are the remaining 20 marks? So these 20 marks are professional marks, which means subjective marks. So this paper, total 100 marks, 50 will be the passing mark. Now, I will always tell my students that this paper would train you to be the finance director within a group. So therefore, when we mark your script, because currently I'm the exam marker at ACCA, so when we read the candidate's answer, we can instantly tell that whether or not that student can qualify as the finance director of a group or not. So therefore, although ACCA published the marking scheme for the professional marks, however, when we mark the script, and of course these marks are quite subjective indeed, and therefore, I'd like to give you my best advice to you of how to tackle this paper. So firstly, that this exam contains three questions, each with 40 technical marks and 10 professional for question one, and 25 markers each for question two and three, and all of them are compulsory questions. Now, the professional skills mark, as we can see there, so includes communication mark, only assist in question one, analysis and evaluation skills mark, skepticism mark, and also commercial acumen mark. Now, the ways that we can get these professional marks would be this. Firstly, for the communication mark, you need to get the report format right. You need to have a title called report, and then two from date subject, introduction paragraph, actual content, splitting into different requirements with the headings being bold and underlined with the final conclusion in the end. So make sure that you answer all the requirements set by the examiner. Analysis evaluation skills mark, so you can always get these marks by providing narrative from my experience. So for example when you're required to evaluate something, so make sure they always state the assumptions of your comment, of your calculations, advantages and disadvantages of the models that you've been using. So very, very important indeed. So, if you are given specifically the skepticism mark, of course, skepticism mark will assist in every question in the AFM. Make sure that you state the assumptions of different models that you've been using. Finally, commercial acumen mark. So make sure they always give practical comment, linking that with the case and making sure you provide insight within your answer. Now, I wouldn't place too much emphasis on the commercial acumen in this paper, unlike in other papers, so for example, the strategic business leader and the advanced performance management examinations, where you are required to comment on the strategic part uh, diving into deeper about the strategic stuff. However, in the AFM paper, all you need to do is that you will need to answer the requirement. So without bringing too much uh, textbook knowledge, but to answer the requirement asked by the examiner and being able to comment on that a bit further, and that would be absolutely fine there. So, uh, the examiner will be keen to see any keyword, especially for the linking words, such as, for example, alternatively, because. Okay, so if you're using these two words, and it is highly likely that you will get quite a lot of the professional marks in the actual exam there. Now, the AFM paper involves lots and lots of calculations. However, this is not the calculative paper, it's a narrative paper. So therefore, make sure they focus your answer, particularly on the narrative part. 
I will always deem that there will be 50 and 50% 50 split between the calculations and narratives in this paper. So make sure if you find yourself writing too less in this paper, it is highly unlikely for any student to pass this exam. Now, very importantly, the, the syllabus have been updated in 2024 to include these three new topics especially. Firstly, the green finance, which means the options that we can finance our activities related to the ESG, which means the environmental, social and governance perspectives. Secondly, we'll touch on the concept called SPAC. Okay, so especially if you're going to be listing your business uh, onto the stock exchange, there will be a particular new way to do this. Thirdly, we're going to be valuing loss-making companies, especially for high-tech companies later on. As we can see, the traditional syllabus of the AFM, or Advanced Financial Management paper, has been divided from the section A, for example, the role of senior financial advisor in multinational organisations, where we're going to be talking about, for example, the economic environment, corporate governance, and dividend policies, and so many things in there. And then the section B, Advanced Investment Appraisal, but don't get me wrong, the examiner is still keen to test you about the basic investment appraisal technique, including the internal rate of return or IRR, the net present value, MPV analysis. However, the examiner at this level will also be keen to ask you about the advanced technique. So, for example, the adjusted present value or APV analysis, the MIRR, modified internal rate of return, the uh, Macaulay duration, okay, in addition to payback and discounted payback period. So making sure that you always know this stuff. But the examiner, when uh, the examining team setting the AFM exam questions, the examining team will be keen to link all other syllabus or areas into one single question. So for example, in the acquisitions and mergers in the section C, we've talked about the concept called the free cash flow methodology, including the free cash flows to firm and the free cash flows to equity. The free cash flow methodology will also be linked with the advanced investment appraisal in the section B, so make sure that you're ready for that. And of course, when we come to valuing a particular business using the free cash flow methodology, we still recap on those concepts as well. But later on, when we talk about the business finance, including the weighted average cost of capital calculations, we'll always use the free cash flow methodology in valuing the value of equity in particular. So make sure that you're ready. And of course, in the section D, we'll need to look at different forms of corporate reconstruction in reorganisation. But here, the most important thing will be the ideas that we've studied before, so for example, including the MPV analysis, including the valuation of debt and valuation of equity using different approaches and the calculation of uh, cost of capital to be integrated in the section D again. And of course, section E, most students are struggle with this topic, treasury and advanced risk management techniques. So nowadays, as you can see, the international investment appraisal question is commonly seen in the AFM actual exam. So if the international investment appraisal is tested, so usually that the examiner will add a bit of extra scenarios whereby the company is going to receive money from overseas or perhaps the company is going to borrow some money from the bank, or perhaps the company is making international investment appraisal, whereby the company may be entering into the swap agreement. So if that's the case then, as you can see, that the ways that we hedge against the foreign exchange rate risk if we were to receive money from overseas, or perhaps we will need to enter into a certain agreement regarding the hedging of interest rate risk. So, if especially if the company is going to borrow some money from uh, from the bank in the future. So, as you can say, the for example, the currency futures, uh, currency options, 
and even the interest rate futures, the forward rate agreement may be tested in this particular paper. So make sure they're ready for the calculation and the comment part of each of the financial instrument in turn, including the advantages and disadvantages. Now, as you can say, there are 20 professional skills mark which I've explained before, so make sure that you're aware that only question one, yes, we've got communication marks, and the other three, and for question two and question three, only three of the professional skills marks will be available there. And finally, the part J will be requiring students to input their answers in the word processor and also the Excel spreadsheet. So make sure in the Excel spreadsheet in particular, you will need to use formally. So for example, equals to this plus that cell, and that's very important there. At the same time nowadays, the Black Souls option pricing model, or we can call it the BSOP model, you don't really have to remember or to refer to the formulae given in the formula sheet any longer because you're only required to input different variables in the Excel. Uh, the formulae have been set by the examiner where you're going to be inputting the variable and job done. Now, we are given in this exam 11 formulae and 3 tables. For example, the formulae related to Modiglione and Miller's per position number 2 where we are using this to calculate the cost of equity. And then we are given the capital asset pricing model. Again, we are using that to calculate the cost of equity. We are given the asset beta formula. So this means that the beta, we may be substituting the beta in the cap, cap, cap M model. So we are going to be using that to calculate the cost of equity again. And of course, we have got the growth model which means the dividend growth model, will be calculating the share price by using the future dividend, alternatively calculating a cost of equity again. And of course, for the growth rate determination, one of the ways will be to use the Gordon's growth method. And then we are given the weighted average cost of capital calculation formally. We are also given the international Fisher effect, but in this exam, it is very unlikely that this has been tested in the past. And we are given the purchasing power parity theory to predict the future forex rate or foreign exchange rate. Especially if you're facing the international investment appraisal questions. And also you're given the MIRR calculations and BSOP model as well. And you are given three tables, including the present value table, including the annuity table, and also the standard normal distribution table as well. So make sure they are ready. Of course, the standard normal distribution table, usually in this exam, is to calculate something called the value at risk. So make sure that you are ready. Right. Now, to summarise these, I would like to highlight there will be six particularly important areas that you need to focus on. Firstly, regarding the investment appraisal, with lots and lots of techniques inside there, the WAC calculations, the business valuations, including to value equity and to value debt. Option pricing model not only assists in the investment appraisal, but also assists when we are valuing the equity of a given business. Reconstructions ways, and finally, very importantly, hedging part. So make sure you will get these six areas right. And of course, for any given exam question, mixing at least two out of these six into one single question will be quite commonly seen in this exam. Now, the top tip for passing the AFM is to make sure that you write as many points as possible. For each point will be 1.5 line sentence long and that will be very key there. Right, okay. In this exam, you are required to state assumptions regarding the calculations and also within your comment. So here, I've summarized four 
particular types of assumptions they can always refer to in your actual AFM exam. I would say that the list I provided here will be quite useful for you to pass this paper. Firstly, if you're calculating a future cost price, for example, in the MPV calculation or something like that, irrespective of whether or not you're doing a potential project, evaluating a potential project, alternatively, valuing a target company's future cost flows. So always comment on the growth rates they've been using and the selling price and costs. So whether or not that has been subject to inflation or something like that. And of course, if I were you, I would like to add one easy mark. You can always get mark for this. Because you're predicting something, you need further verifications of those figures. And of course, you're demonstrating your ability of skepticism because skepticism marks will assist in every question. So make sure you use that sentence in your answer. At the same time, if you're commenting on the beta, it's very likely that you get this. So how can you get that beta factor? Proxy, average, that does not really reflect the current situation perhaps? If you're commenting on changes after the mergers and acquisitions or reconstruction schemes taking place inside your business, make sure that you comment on whether or not the credit spread of a client's company will change, whether or not the credit ratings of a client's company will change. So if that's the case then, because we will forecast what changes might be so that we can consider the future cost of debt into our calculations, so make sure that you're ready for that and to comment on that, that might not be correct, for example. Finally, very importantly, if you're using any of these following models, including the Modiglione and Miller or M&M, Capen model using adjusted present value calculation, MIRR, BSOP model and purchasing power parity theories, make sure you always comment on the disadvantages of each of those. And because nowadays it is the computer-based exam, so that's why I would like to require my student to copy and paste all the requirements in the answer box. Make sure you notice the keywords and, so you're going to be splitting the answers, splitting those question requirements into subheadings. And make sure you answer all these requirements so you can get a very high professional skills mark later on. So now let's focus on the new syllabus area in the AFM exam from 2024 onwards. Firstly, we introduced a concept called SPEC, which means Special Purpose Acquisition Companies. So what this means is that before the company is going to be listed onto the stock exchange, we can list our company using the SPEC way. This commonly exists in the United States of America and the United Kingdom and the major stock exchanges all around the world. So how this works would be this. Firstly, the venture capitalists or a group of famous investors may be inputting cash into a company called A and then we will be applying the spec route to list the company A onto the stock exchange directly. Now, the company A is listed now, it's the public listed company. However, it hasn't got its business operations at all, it only got cash. Because under this route, it is required the company A should find the target company to buy. So what if the company A cannot buy another company in the next two years? So if that's the case then, according to the stock exchange requirements, the company A has to be dissolved, or which means the company A has to be delisted from the stock exchange. Now, what if the company A buys the company B? So if that's the case then, what we will do next will be the company A buying the company B and then merging with company B. So therefore, company A will change its name to the company B 
after binding complete B, so effectively complete B is least state. And that's the idea. So which means a group of investors firstly list the company, putting cash in the company A, and then company A is finding target. After company A buys company B, merges with the company B, and company B is listed onto the stock exchange. So this is how it works. So usually we call these investors at the very first start they input money into setting up the company A and list the company A, they are called sponsors. At the same time, they input cash in the company A and the cash will be invested usually in the treasury bills to make sure that cash yields additional interests. Right, and that's how it works. Of course, the biggest problem of the spec, okay, uh, would be that what if a lot of other investors buy the company A shares, but after which the company A cannot locate the target to buy the company B. So if that's the case then, of course, the investor will suffer from a loss in the end. Now, another topic is called green finance. I've uh, recorded a separate video uh, already. Okay, you can find it, for example, on your study platform or in a YouTube channel. Now, the next area is quite new to the syllabus will be to value loss-making companies. And these companies usually will be the high-tech companies. Now, uh, from a syllabus point of view, we are required to discuss a few practical considerations regarding these. So for example, a lot of high-tech companies, of course, currently making profit, but it has got a very good future revenue potential because if I were to expand into the market share, I will get these customers to buy my other services so I can earn profit in the near future. So when we are valuing these type of businesses, we focus primarily not on its profit because it hasn't got any profit at all at the moment, but we focus on the future revenue and also the intellectual property, so which means the intangible asset. We'll always keep an eye on to the cash burn rate, which means how much cash that you've spent in advertising your business activities and how you convert cash into your revenue or into the number of users of your internet platform. And also we need to bear in mind the cost structure will also be very important there because quite a lot of of these loss making companies, particularly their high tech companies, they will have a very high fixed cost structure there. So high fixed cost structure simply means in the near future, if you want to scale up your business activity, getting more and more customers, you don't really incur too much on the variable cost in the near future. However, unlike Airbnb that I said before with high fixed cost structure, however, Another company is called Lyft, okay, it's the ride hailing service company, uh, so it has got a very low fixed cost structure. So this means that if the business activity is scaled up in the near future, it will have to incur lots of other costs to correspond with the increase in revenue, so watch out. The final area of the AFM exam is that I will take you through to the recent examiner's report from December 2022 and 2023. As you can see, examining team has highlighted a few problems here. So it's very, very key to read the examiner's report because such weaknesses may be repeating in the future exams. Now, the common weaknesses would be very weak hedging calculations. So make sure that you're ready for that. And also, poor handling of assumptions discussions. So make sure you always bring narrative alongside with your answers, especially for your calculations. Very, very important there. But I want to touch the point here. If you can see the past exam question here, for example, I've taken this question from the 2023 exam. For example, part A, it seems to be quite a theoretical question requirement here. 
discuss the agency problems created by Joel's yard company uh, of the proposed takeover of the F company as a defence and risk diversification strategy and explain how this could be mitigated. So this means that we have got three parts here. However, when you read the examiner's answer, as you can see, it's more of a textbook knowledge. But from a student's point of view, we are, it's very highly unlikely that we can write these type of answers in the actual examiner. Okay, so you can read them on your own. However, I created my own answer in my AFM course. So for example, from my perspective, when I mark the script, I will see clearly whether or not the student's answer is answering the question asked by the examiner. Firstly, yes, talking about the discussion. For example, directors care about their job security. Linking that to the case, for example, the case says they care about the implications for the future after the uh, takeover announcement uh, has been noticed. So how we mitigate